Have you heard of that show, uh, Primal? Uh, it's on. It's on HBO Max. It's an Adult Swim show. No, I don't think I've seen it. Uh, it's an animated show. Uh, the guy who made Samurai Jack, and he made the Clone Wars series oh. from 2003. Yeah, you know, I think I think you sent this to me. Yeah, you should definitely watch that. Um, it's basically a caveman and a dinosaur going on adventures. A fucking T-Rex. It's pretty sick. It's it's bloody, it's gory and shit. It's pretty sick. You should watch that. Nice. I mean, yeah, maybe I'll check it out. Uh... And they're short episodes, too. They're like 12 minutes each. They're like... It's a little mini series. It's on the second season. So that's for me and for everyone. Go watch Primal. Yeah, everybody should go watch Primal. Primal is sick. If you if you enjoy animation, adult animation, I should say. Ooh, adult. Yeah. If you enjoy tentacles and. and <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no. Should I start now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the Perfect Movie Podcast, the podcast where we answer the question, is this a perfect movie? And today we're answering that question about two movies. Two. Double duty. It's a twofer. Funny. It's funny because I said duty. <laughs> so the two movies we'll be speaking about today and the purpose of our Perfect Movie Podcast is to make the perfect movie list. So when the aliens come down... And they're like, you're not worthy, y'all are trash. We'll throw down our list of perfect movies, and they'll have to reconsider. They'll yeah. be like, damn, this is some real artistry. Yeah. Good thing you guys made this list, or else we would have never found them. They'll shut down their probes, and yeah, they'll be the, like, the, nah. they'll bring they'll bring their saucers home. They'll be like, you guys are all right. So, the two movies, 1987's Predator. Do you think the aliens would appreciate how we represent aliens in film? You know, this might I we might need to come back around on this later for 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 the list because you know we got to be considerate about about how we portray predators. You know, true. You don't want to be like like how 1950 movies portrayed natives. You know, that's kind of <laughs> what this feels like. If you were an alien, yeah, they'd be like, "Wow, is that what you think of us? We yeah. just come here. We're just here to slaughter you here. No, we were here to talk. But now that you pissed us off, we are here to slaughter you." It's a fucked up game, man. So anyways, maybe we just can't put either of these on here. Anyways, <laughs> this is already off the rails. This Alien is going to be me great. Too. <laughs> All right. So the two movies are Predator, the original Predator from 1987, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, and 2022 sequel, Prey, starring a lady that looks a lot like, um, what's her name, from Parks and Recreation. Oh, I've been oh yeah, she does actually. That's you know, weird. I've been saying her name a bunch, and now I'm suddenly <laughs> blanking it because, of course, of course I am. Is it the girl? Isn't she in um, Brooklyn Nine Nine or whatever? Isn't she is in that she? too? No, there's another character that is a lot like her. That's a very sarcastic, but she's Latina. Okay, because she kind of looks like her too. No, I am talking about Aubrey Plaza, starring Native uh, American Aubrey Plaza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Her actual name is Amber Mid Thunder. That's pretty badass. It's a cool name. Her Mid brother? Thunder. Dakota Beavers. That's also a very native name. Very cool. <laughs> I mean, uh, at least they're Dakota casting. and then Beavers. Yeah. Those are like, yeah, you're native for show. <laughs> Big fact. And he is. Anyway, so we're going to try to review two movies at once. So if this gets a little confused like this introduction was, I mean, that's just that's just the way that goes. Yeah, man. It's kind of off the rip today. It's all good. So, I think we should do our opening thoughts, which I think we should say, like, uh, how many of these Predator movies have we seen? How big of a fan of Predator are we? Yeah. And then we'll kind of break down the movies. Do you yep. want to start? Uh, we're starting with Prey. Well, no, I'm saying, like, right, I'll start. So, 
Like, I haven't... I'm not, like, the hugest Predator fan. I've seen, I think, Alien vs. Predator, maybe even Alien vs. Predator 2. I believe I'd seen Predator before I watched it most recently in preparation for this podcast. But I missed all the middle sequels, never seen Predator 2, Predators, The Predator, and then I watched Prey yeah. this weekend as well. What about you? Um, I, I would agree with you. I'm not the biggest Predator fan either. Um, I'm more of a Ridley Scott alien kind of guy if I'm going to watch sci-fi. Um, uh, Predators never really did anything for me. I, I saw Predators, plural. I've seen that movie like three times. Um, I might have seen that movie. I might have seen it and That's, evacuated my memory. I feel like with, I might have watched that with y'all some afternoon probably. like we were hanging out. <clears throat> the movie with the one with Adrian Brody and uh not the girl from Fast and Furious. Not that girl. Different girl. <laughs> Different girl. Um yeah. Th- these movies don't really do much for me. Damn. If I'm being completely honest. So, hot uh, take. Whoa. All right. So I would just want to say these, it's, it's kind of fortunate that these two movies are basically the same plot. So we can kind of lay them out just in case you're following along. You haven't seen a predator movie. Um, so the, the idea is there's this alien called the predator comes down and it's here to hunt. It comes to earth in most movies. Um, and it's sort of a, a ritual thing. It comes down and it's there to kill, you know, whatever's around and is like big game it's kind of like a big game hunter but it's hunting things on earth it's basically like alpha predator like the the top of the food apex chain. predator apex predator yeah yeah um <clears throat> this thing and each time it comes back it's like trying to be a better killer essentially yeah so. it seems like it's it's kind of shown in the alien vs predator movies i think that it's like it's kind of like a rite of passage thing yeah which aligns a lot with our protagonist in Prey, who, um, she is trying to go along her rite of passage. Her name's Naru in the movie. She's going on her rite of passage. She wants to become a hunter. The, you know, the boys are like, no, stay in the kitchen, woman. Mm -hmm. We don't really respect you. It should be made clear that Prey is a prequel to the original Predator. Yes, because it's set in, like, the 1600s, early, early sort of colonial Colonial America, but... This is, we're following a native tribe, a uh, Comanche tribe, and she's a Comanche warrior. Well, she's a Comanche woman who wants to be part of, like, the hunter. The hunter. The hunter tribe and not the, the gatherer. Right. Basically. And in this movie, she's on her hunt to, yeah, they have, like, a special ritual hunt where, you know, if you go out and you slay the mountain lion, or in this movie, you also slay a predator, you have passed your ritual and you, you know, become right. a new leader in the tribe. So that's what's happening in Prey, and in Predator, we just got the manliest men ever. Yeah, they're like a Black Ops covert team. Yeah, so there's basically the the America hires a, a covert team. Um, some like Green Beret guys went missing in in Guatemala, and they hire these manly ass men to I mean, just go the and rescue them. Of men. I mean, you can feel the earth. The, the the earth tremble when they give each other handshakes and shit. <laughs> <laughs> they got biceps for days. We got Arnold Schwarzenegger. We got Carl Weathers. We got Bill Duke and Jesse Ventura. And these are all like guys who are from the eighties that were just super like there's superstars in the action genre basically. Yeah. And they're just uh they're there to 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 rescue mission, but the rescue mission quickly turns left. They realize that the rescue mission is not exactly as it seems and then basically they find out they're expendable yeah and then then they find out that the the, there's something else in the forest here that's been you know that's killed the people that they're looking for and Mm -hmm. is now trying to kill them and the reason why they know it's different is because like the bodies they're coming across are like skinned like they're all their flesh is ripped off and they're hung in precarious ways and stuff it's sketchy it's pretty sketchy, pretty weird, and that's sort of the jumping off point for each movie is yeah. predators in the area, and our main characters gotta survive and fight the predator. Honestly, that's the plot for every single predator movie. It's a slasher. Especially, I think the first one comes across even more so as like a slasher yeah, movie. Yeah, sci-fi slasher. Because you yeah. don't see... So, there's lots of trekking through the jungle, trekking through the jungle, and you don't really see predator at all for like an hour yeah for like an hour plus and then i think you get the full body reveal towards the end what the fuck pause (coughs) 
What up? Where you at, nigga? I'm at my house. Pussy. Pussy, bitch. What are you guys doing? He's re- we're recording a podcast. What are you doing? So we might have a guest speaker. All right, <laughs> guest on the podcast. Come on over. I forgot what we were just saying. Um, <clears throat> I was saying that I don't think you really see a full body shot until the end of the film, or at least a full reveal of I'm like. Kind of TO'd because they don't really show us a full body shot. <laughs> 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 no, but you don't really see it. And I would say. Um, that's kind of the thing that I think really separates them is this feel I feel like first predator feels a little bit more like a slasher where it's like it's kind of the unseen enemies coming right. and stalking you unstoppable right. there's lots of shots that are just like the actor that's about to get killed just like turning around being like <gasps> and then they're just yeah. kind of like murdered and off the screen yeah trail of blood type of deal and I think prey is a little more like we played with these conventions a while we know what to do and it's built while it's still like I think the predator is scary and the predator is you know, vicious, it's built around maybe a little more of like an action set piece around each kill. Yeah. Or attempted kill. It's it's it takes that whole thing of like if you've seen any slasher movies, like the kills are creative and they're they're different and they're um they're kinda like borderline goofy. Um and that's what I've noticed a lot with these predator films as well. It's like the kills are so over the top and you know, there's blood splurting everywhere and the predator is like crushing some guy with i don't know it's just something weird just yeah. like the weirdest way to kill somebody ever and that, that's what this movie is all about it's all about being over the top and and stuff so all right so i think before we close out of the opening thoughts i have i have some alternate titles for two movies okay so alternate title for prey there's five for each this might be a bit much okay Lady has plot armor. Okay. Somehow the French are still the worst species in a movie about a killer alien trophy hunter from space. Dang. We don't like the French. Digging at the French there. I mean, the French were not great in this, in Prey. No, they weren't. The French were assholes. No. I don't think their acting was that great either. So. Girl boss predator. Predator 1662. (laughs) Or... Man, the societal structures of the patriarch are really be holding bitches down, huh? <laughs> <laughs> or how about the uh, girls get it done? Girl, that, uh, girls get it done was my six. I typed <laughs> girls get it done like three times, and then I didn't. I, uh, then I, I didn't do it. That's uh, yeah. Basically, I, it's basically <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what about okay? My my predator titles might be better. Two governors, one predator. Because Jesse Ventura <laughs> and Schwarzenegger. Okay. Yeah, that's good. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. That's just a reference to a line. <laughs> uh, there's a new movie with Pete Davidson called Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Kind of a twist on that. Biceps, biceps, biceps. <laughs> nice. What about the hunky sweaty boys versus the pussy face monster? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but verbal meme? It's the it's the two astronauts with the one shooting the other one, and it's the first astronaut saying, "I'm sick and tired of them putting this gay shit in all these Hollywood movies," <laughs> and the second one saying, "It was always gay." <laughs> <laughs> this movie just reminds me of like 300. Yes, like, everybody's got CGI uh, <laughs> six packs. It's everything. not quite as homoerotic as no, as not at all. it was the precursor to the homoeroticism of 300. I just can't get over that shot. I don't know what they were thinking of when uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And the black guy, they did their little dap up in the beginning yeah, and shook Carl hands, Weathers. and it's just sh- like stuck on their biceps because they're, they're like, all, like arm oil- wrestling. Yeah, they're all like oily and stuff. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like- it's a meme at this point. That <laughs> that handshake. It's great though. I wouldn't have them take it out. All right, That's final great. title: Arnold gets dirty and everyone else gets fucked. <laughs> <laughs> These are more like plot synopsises maybe than titles, but. <laughs> But it works as <laughs> as a title, though. All right, maybe that's going to become a re- recurring thing. Maybe, maybe not. We'll we'll see what the people like. But I think now is time to get into our next segment, the performance test. It was the performance of a lifetime. The performance test is where we talk about our favorite performance, performances, actors, 
characters, moments. What are the things we liked about these two movies? I think we should maybe... Let's start old. Let's start with Predator, and then we'll move on to Prey. All right. Um, I mean, the obvious one, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, he's he's an icon at this point. Um. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if Arnold needs subtitles. Yeah. Sometimes he'll be saying shit, and I'll be like, damn, what are you is talking it, about? Is it bad that I'd rather watch Jingle All the Way than this? Really? So this is maybe where we need to... You should just let the hate flow through you this whole time. Because it seems like... Caitlin sat down and was like, I'm going to shit on the Predator okay. franchise. And I hate I'm it. I'm not really jiving on the Predator. I just think that the the concept is super lazy. What? From a storytelling perspective. Okay, explain yourself. Um, Just the whole thing of like, okay, we're stuck somewhere and there, there's a Predator. It's the same model movie. It's the yeah. same thing. I mean, it's called a franchise. I understand that, but you can throw some different shit in there. And I understand people will say, well, what about Aliens vs. Predators? What about the 2018 movie, The Predator, when they had, like, a Hulk version of The Predator? I want to say they were after some autistic boy for some reason, <laughs> or too. something weird, and there was, like, a government experience. I never watched that piece of shit, so. No. Um, I just, I find it boring. Whereas, like, you think of, so I always like to, I mean, compare and contrast this to Ridley Scott's Alien and just how slow and methodical that film was, but how effective it was at horror. And I guess it's two different genres because The Predator is essentially an action film. Somewhat. I think it's a slasher and an action film. Yeah. It takes a, it splits right in the middle I, I right after the attack i understand why people are nostalgic for these films or at least for the predator franchise in general and i mean the predator itself like the alien it's a cool concept and stuff and i mean i thought the best film out of all of these was the predators plural where the that had the most interesting plot where it's like they're they're put on a game preserve planet and each character has their own special skill or their own thing that they're like these elite killers from all around the world and they all have to work together to defeat the predators basically and i thought that was an in interesting concept but the execution was just so fucking botched yeah um yeah i don't know what it is it's, it's more so just a personal bias where i just these films just don't really click for me they don't really jive for me it's not really my thing so. it's funny because you said the slow you appreciate the slow buildup of aliens i have it written down right in my notes this was like my first note. I appreciate how quickly this movie escalates. It doesn't fuck around. Okay. That's why, like, the Predator, especially I noticed, Prey hung around a little in the beginning and was dragging yeah. a little at the beginning. <clears throat> Predator, they have, like, one five-minute scene where they're like, you need to get your band together. We're right. going to do this mission. Big-ass handshake. And then they're immediately on a helicopter to the place. Right. And you're meeting, like, Jesse Ventura and Shane Black's one of the characters, and you're meeting all these guys along the way. I think I just appreciate the more subtle horror aspect of, like, horror films. Whereas, yeah. Whereas, like, the in-your-face, like, we're showing you the monster doing all these crazy kills, or, like, you're watching, like, uh, what is it, um, The Conjuring. Yeah. And the ghost is throwing people against walls and shit. But then think of that compared to, like, Hereditary. I don't know if you've seen Hereditary before. But, like, if you just look in the background, you see all these creepy this creepy imagery and then like the dialogue is what sucks you in because the dialogue is so uncomfortable and then there's just terrible shit going on in uh, in, in the background and the foreground of, of, of this stuff i just so. think it's a different type of movie like predator especially feels like it's a setup like it's like we're doing this action movie it seems like typical like schwarzenegger shoot him up right let's shoot up some bad guys in the jungle type of deal and then it's like smash they run into this monster and i think well i can't like i can't uh, i can't uh i mean you feel how you feel i can't really disagree with you i actually didn't like this maybe as much as i thought i would but but predator i feel like it's a fun mashup of being like let's put all these big brutes yeah. and then <laughs> let's have this unstoppable force and like see what happens and like watch them unravel and I, I, I think from my viewing of the predator it al it also had well, it's just so dated. Some um, of the like action, especially towards <laughs> the end, once they really has to un unfurl the action, it's a yeah. little like, whoa, this is a little tough. And this was, and this is on my part. I mean, this is, I mean, I fucked up because this is the first time I've ever watched this, which was like 
a week ago. And so watching Prey right before I watched Predator, like that was probably not the best idea. Um, Cause I wasn't able to appreciate the, um, the artistry around the filmmaking. So. I, this is probably going to be a uh, apocryphal. People may hate. I think I like Prey a little better than I like Predator. I, I agree with that. And some of it has to do with the action is more badasser, which I sound like, <laughs> which I sound like such like a, like a, just like a dumbass being like, yeah. well, it's just cooler. But yeah. And like, I'm usually not the person that is like crying about special effects. Like I don't really care about special effects and sure. often, but I just think there was a lot of cool concepts that it executed on. Sure. And which I, I think I want to get into in a second, but yeah, I'd say Predator, the, the, I think the strength of Predator, in my opinion, is all those funny characters. Like, there's so many funny lines in yeah. this. My favorite line from Arnold Schwarzenegger is when he throws a knife into the, the guard and he's like, stick around. <laughs> <laughs> I busted out loud <laughs> when I saw that. <clears throat> or the guy that keeps making jokes about his wife's pussy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that guy's pretty funny. <laughs> or like uh, when... <laughs> when uh jesse ventura is shoveling dip into his mouth and he's like y'all want some y'all want some <laughs> and they're all like no and he's like this stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus i think the best scene honestly was that intro scene where they're just kind of all gearing up and they're like getting on the, the plane and stuff and they're just having that ba that back and forth banter and yeah that they're, was the best part of the movie they're, yeah that's kind of the strength of the movie the characters are pretty fun i also liked how even when it got more serious um What's his name? There was uh, Jesse Ventura's best friend, played by Bill Duke, Mac. Mm -hmm. Mac, after Jesse Ventura dies, I loved, it's such a manly thing. He's like crying and crying, but all he says is, goodbye, bro. <laughs> <laughs> It's just such a, just such a, a emotionally goodbye, repressed. Goodbye, bro. Emotionally repressed man stuff, Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? Can't cry in front of the boys. <laughs> no. No, also Bill Duke is in the movie Mandy, living in a trailer park. You no, know, I still haven't seen that. You should watch Mandy. Cause I, Nick, they, watch I was trying to find the, the thing on YouTube. Nicolas Cage's freak out when he goes and meets up with Bill Duke is like the peak. But it's not on YouTube. You can't find the clip. He had a pretty good performance in that. Yes, because he's just watched uh, spoilers for Mandy. Pause, pause, pause. Oh, maybe I shouldn't spoil it for you. But basically, he's just watched some horrible shit happen. And he's like, it's just this fucking evil i can't even like he can't that, even that explain. shot was in the trailer yeah. I think. yeah yeah but there's more to it anyways uh yeah so predator i think we have a little more middling feelings about yeah you did you didn't i think you, i'm more middling you're more like i just found this boring yeah i think and i don't think it's any real slight to the movie itself i think it's just it was made in the wrong time and i just and i watched it at the wrong time you yeah. know so it didn't really have that same effect as somebody who had grown up watching this film. So. Yeah. But I think... It's no sight to the movie. I think it's fun and it's campy. Sure. It's a watchable enough movie. Sure. So let's move along to Prey. The newest one. Um, I will say, um, I think the director, who also did 10 Cloverfield Lane, a movie you've apparently forgotten about... Dan Trachtenberg, I think I think he really is like flexing in this movie, I really, with, in a subtle way. I remember liking Ten Cloverfield Lane. It's tense. It's yeah. just a very. It's just people in a cellar losing their minds, yeah, kind of. Basically. But I think this movie really like I liked, and it doesn't. It's not super showy about it, but it seems to have like it's called Prey, and then it has all these running themes of like you. The first I think image is like an ant, and then like a rat eats an ant. And then the snake eats the rat. It's just the food chain. And it's so like the the sort of like circle of life, circle yeah. of... Uh, the bigger thing will always eat yeah. the smaller thing. Or like, and then the predator gets on the ground and it's like, oh shit, this is the big thing. What I found funny was like, I guess this is just the nature of the predators. But the predator is just like killing everything. <laughs> like, yeah. Like uh, this, there's a snake just trying to eat a, you know, eat the mouse or whatever, and then the predator comes and skins the snake alive. It well, but like, the whole deal is it's like watching, it's watching and observing what, right. what is like the predator. And it, it learns from 
these things or whatever. And it just keeps like everything it kills, it just keeps amping it up. It's like, like working its way up the food chain. It, yeah. it, though I think the whole point is it's supposed to, you know, Become find the dominant predator. Yeah, and find the like most dangerous prey or whatever yeah. to hunt. Which and, in that aspect, I like that aspect. I think that's cool and that's interesting that like this race of aliens, that, that's all they're about. They're, they're not about like world domination. They're not about taking over the universe, whatever. They're just like, we just want to be fucking badass and that's it like, yeah they're like we're doing our, our hunting ritual and we're pretty good at it and we're gonna do it here today you know hope hopefully it's not in your neighborhood i do think uh aubrey plaza aka amber mid thunder pretty good pretty good um she came out very flat to me as a character i think at the beginning it was struggling a little bit like the one line that's in the trailer, I actually really hate it, where she's like, why do you want to hunt so much? And she's like, I want to hunt so much because you guys don't think I can. Yeah, I rolled my eyes. <laughs> it was like, all right. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's let's uh, confront the elephant in the room about this, too. These are Native Americans in the 1700s, and all of them are speaking perfect English. And that And that's just a personal gripe again, but that bothered the shit out of me. To the point where it kind of took me out of the experience. Like, I wish... And I think they're coming out with a cut that is a Comanche edit. But it's it's just subtitles, though. Oh. Like, I... Where it's, I, it's dubbed I, over with English subtitles. They're just not gonna release a movie this big. Like, what's the last franchise movie you've seen in subtitles? Well, I wish it was done... But it's been done before. More tastefully. No, it hasn't. Yes, it. I mean, have you seen a uh, like good subtitled movies exist? But Hollywood does not greenlight their like premiere no, franchises to have. They don't. But I, I'm saying if if you're trying to, it is a make half, anything coherent and interesting. It is know, a half you have measure. To be, you have to be authentic. You know, otherwise you're gonna lose the audience because you're you're trying to make us believe that these are Native Americans that have not been colonized yet from the 1600s 1700s yeah and they're speaking perfect english where these guys sound like they just came off of facebook live <laughs> you know what i mean like well i think well two things i think they kind of used they didn't go as long but it's a device that's been used in movies before she starts i think at the beginning of the movie saying a poem in comanche or some sort of like rhyme and uh and then it like transitions to english and the movie The Hunt for Red October kind of did a similar thing, except it was like a five minute scene or whatever where everybody's speaking Russian and then yeah. like a camera pans in and pans out and they're speaking English and it's supposed to be like signal to the audience like that they're, they're speaking they're, Russian, but but so for the sake of the audience, we're, we're speaking English because we're not going to do this all movie. Sure. And I, I picked up on that, too. But at the same time, I don't know, because recently I've been watching like um, some like Korean stuff on uh netflix like there's a show called kingdom and it's all in korean and it's basically a zombie feudal korea or whatever anyways um but it really draws you in because it's like you're you're in this setting and you're you're doing a time period a period piece and you're in the setting with these characters and they speak the way that they would speak back then and it it, it makes it that more much more engaging for the audience yeah so, I like I agree with that, but that was something I kind of had to just like toss away because yeah. of reality. <laughs> I, I was like, that. realistically, we're not gonna have that movie release. Sure, sure, and I, I understand that too. But I think it, I mean, to me, it's just kind of disappointing. But at the same time, it's like you know, I yeah. understand for budgetary reasons and time constraints and and uh, and all that jazz. So. I did think her brother was pretty good. I think yeah, her he was brother cool. was better. Yeah, he was a he was a cool character a cool character i think there was some interesting things so i think the strength of this movie is a lot of the like predator action towards the end is really cool and there's some really fun like setups to make that happen so yeah. so like our, our main character naru she gets uh she gets captured by some french fur traders which are kind of hinted to earlier when she comes across a whole field of bison that are that are skinned. Yeah, that was a scene ripped straight from uh, Dances with Wolves. Have you seen that? Yeah, but it's also a rip straight from history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that did happen. No, I It's kind of what they did. No, I know. It, just, it looked just like the scene from Dances uh -oh. with Wolves. I don't think I've watched Dances with Wolves, honestly. But, so she gets captured, 
And then there's this scene where the, the trappers know about this. There's the monster in the woods and the trappers are trying to like set bait with her and then they eventually get her brother and they tie him up to like a tree in the middle of this like foggy empty area. And I thought all the action that happened in that scene was like pretty fun and pretty cool. The way it starts out where there's the guys on the ridge that are supposed to be like overwatch and there's yeah. dudes on horses even behind them and you don't even see any of the kills happen. You just hear some like thumps and a little stuff going on. And then you see the horses just trot away the from the dudes. Falls off the horse. Or yeah, whatever. and the guys are like, "Oh no, uh oh!" And things immediately go to shit. I just think it was like the the cool part about this movie was like, so you're basically like, uh, for the time period, sticks and stones, and then muskets, going up against an otherworldly force, and that's what's interesting about it. It's like the predator just goes ham on these dudes. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> no mercy whatsoever it's just i think it's interesting how many different little set pieces and ideas that they came up with that i don't think have been done in a predator movie before that were like cool like when it murdered the bear and then yeah. the bear covered its, its blood covered the predator that was invisible but now you can see its form because yeah. it's covered in bear blood like that seems like the thing ever like yeah. cover the predator in blood so you see it but so you, you see don't him. see it yeah that's or throw like, some mud at him or something or you know yeah but like that scene which immediately transitions into the the open field of grass scene where like again the predator is invi mostly invisible except for blood but they can see the trail of the of the grass that's yeah. stomping down yeah like these are all like smart action set pieces and that's what's cool about the way they wrote the uh naru character was like she not only is the predator learning from everything but she's learning from everything too and that really added to her character where it's like her strength is not in her strength and in, in, in her uh, her muscles no uh, it's not like mind. these not like the boys before right. they had plenty of strength in their muscles but only schwarzenegger had the strength of mind <laughs> but uh she yeah like her gift is and i think observation yeah also. like loser parts of the internet are gonna be like how does she defeat the predators skinny lady she's don't a know Mary shit. Sue. she don't know shit she's stupid lady that's that's me impersonating that part of the internet well guess what that's not her skill her skill is yeah learning things she's learning things when she and she's always got the best ideas like her brother tells her you know we did it we got the lion even though she fell over and cracked her skull which i laughed out loud at when yeah she got fucked up <laughs> when she confronts the uh confronts the lion and bites it but like her plan ultimately worked and her plan ends up working at the end of this movie. Yeah. You know, I, th I found it interesting, too, because I thought they would delve more into, like, the spiritual aspect of Native American culture. Yeah. Because especially when they're dealing with something otherworldly. And, you know, she... So, at first, when she see she sees the predator ship... I don't know, was it crash landing in the beginning? When I she, think it was just, like, dropping them off. Okay, so she sees this thing in the, in the sky, and she interprets it as a Thunderbird. And I thought that was interesting. I thought they would have, like, did something with, like, the Skinwalker, where they... Because that's a Native American legend, too, of a thing that takes the form of many different things or whatever. And it's an evil entity. And I thought they would try to interpret what the Predator is and that kind of thing. And nobody felt, like, shocked by what they were seeing. And that kind of bothered me a little bit, too, where it's like you're encountering something not obviously not from this world nobody seems like interested or horrified in the slightest you know did, i mean i don't did know you i catch think... that i mean i caught that from like the trappers and stuff and but like i think the trappers had seen like been like they like noticed they it. knew what, what it was but they were horrified of, of what it was too and like i just thought they would delve more into like what the fuck is this thing or like we should we need to i want to try to figure out what this is or like this is a a bad omen or something, you know, just something along the lines of like how a, a real native American would like interpret this, you know? Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, they, it seemed like, I don't know. I feel like when they finally have like a big interaction with the predator where the, that like group of scouts that were coming to bring her back. Cause our main lady, she goes out on like an adventure by herself. Cause she's like, I want to complete my rite of passage, sure. but y'all won't let me. So I'm just going to run off and do it myself and bring right. back. Right bring back some you know a trophy so i complete my rite of passage yeah um i feel like they seem kind of shocked i mean they weren't like whoa what's that but they were like they were freaked like, out the they fuck? were like this yeah. thing's fucking up everyone yeah this one's ruining everyone so i don't know i feel like they had 
believable enough reactions. Like they didn't like, no, they didn't like sit down and like really contemplate what it is. They yeah. were just like, this is like tree demon. And I guess then again, that's personal bias and I, it's just not that type of movie and I, I need to get over it. <laughs> All right. So we talked a little bit about the performance, actors, characters, moments. So let's move on to it's an art, bro. What's this? It's an art project. Okay, I like it. Picasso. Yeah, that way. This is where we talk about the specifics of the filmmaking process, like the sets, the effects, the lighting, the framing, the soundtrack, the... I think the main thing to talk about for both of these movies, because really the original was The Predator, is the creation of The Predator by the legendary special effects artist Stan Winston. Mm -hmm. This man is prolific let's just name a couple movies that he's done the effects for well, we're talking about the terminator we're talking about aliens we're talking about predator we're talking about jurassic park we're talking about inspector gadget oh my god is that the one with uh, <laughs> uh ferris bueller yeah <laughs> yep this man has just done sort of like animatronic and i mean just the most effects. iconic characters in film history for right yeah it's amazing all kinds of special effects and i think it's a cool did he work on the thing no i believe that's a different person okay. at least it's not on this list so that's not david cronenberg is it no it's a different guy there's like a couple main guys okay and no he was he was not on the thing well, it says additional makeup effects uncredited, so I don't think he's the main guy. I think there's a different guy on the thing. Okay. But, you know, he was he was one of the it guys to get in Hollywood at the time. If you're making a new character, a new, like, effects-driven character, he's yeah. one of the it guys to get. Yeah. And I think it's a cool it's a cool design. There's a reason this has spawned, like, seven movies. Like, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's badass. A, and it's a cool concept. Like, the one thing that I like about it is it's a... It's a, you know, it's a slasher, but it's a slasher with rules. We know what the predator is there for. Like mm -hmm. the predator is there to be the apex predator. Yeah, it has a motive. It has a motive. It has reasoning. And we know like the if and whens of like who gets spared and why, like right. usually makes sense. Yeah. At least in these two movies, I think for the most part, it, it makes sense. It's usually like anything that's maimed or like he doesn't deem as a threat. It, he ignores. Not, yeah, he ignores. And that's interesting. Which, oh, this is what I was going to talk about come back around um i really love the one scene where she's captured the fur trapper and she cuts his leg off and she's like like he doesn't you don't even know that i'm killing you because yeah. she gives him the gun but then the predator comes along and he knows he knows what a gun is or he's yeah. like scanning it and it's like deems that as a threat and so like takes he him out. so yeah. the predator comes in and she like it walks right past her and she steps aside to let it walk past and I wonder if, maybe I'm reading too far in, but is there something there about, like, you know, indigenous people's ability to, like, work with nature and around nature? Right, because what of... she's doing is she's eating the the plant that yeah. lowers the body temperature and so that she doesn't show up on heat signatures. Which I don't um, I don't know if she even did that in that scene, but I think the point is she's she not... She did, she oh, did, yeah, yeah. and that's why she was able to blend into the environment. Yeah, so. and just their ability to sort of, like work with nature and along with nature instead of just like sort using of, nature yeah, yeah use consume destroy there's like a bit the, of a the scene with the the bison and yeah stuff. there's a bit of a contrast there and sure i really like the that in that scene i like the sort of like symbolism happening there right right which also at the end you know okay so you know how she gets the flintlock pistol yeah that's so the, that comes back in Predator 2. Predator 2, that's right. So the Predators Predator have 2. it. And at the end of this movie, you see a bunch of ships are landing. Mm -hmm. They're about to get fucked. Yeah, they're probably... I guess the plan is to make a sequel to this. Is it going to be just like a massive Predator battle? That'd be... It could It could be cool. You know, okay, so this is another thing I did in uh, preparation for this podcast. I was watch a bunch of lore videos on YouTube of like Predator lore. There's a whole bunch of shit. There's it's comics like, and shit. Yeah, it's up there with like Star Wars as far as like content. Like, yeah. at one point, Batman fights the Predator and there's a bunch Sick. of different... There's a bunch of different stories and shit and... uh they go they delve deeper into like what the predators are the race and stuff and their planet yeah and i guess 
them being around aliens and shit, or like the aliens from Ridley Scott's uh, movies, that's canon, I guess. That's like an actual thing. It's like so. a canon predator thing, but not a can canon alien right, thing. Right, right, right. Weird. So. Anyways, um, I thought the... Uh, I thought the general, like, vistas, like, I kind of wish I saw it in the theater and not on the little TV I have here right now. I just thought the vistas were kind of cool. The, the, it really does give, like, sort of the grand scope of, like, you know, pre-colonized yeah, North America. untamed North America. It's, like, a good place to hang out in. Yeah. It's just such a smart, simple thing. It's very serene. and I think I'm coming thing. back around to this movie is just Prey. It's very simple and smart sequel. Right. And I think that's what everyone's been saying online, where it's like, well, this is the, it's what we've been saying for years. Just put the Predator up against anyone at any time in history. It's, yeah. like, it's like the Assassin's Creed of film franchises. Well, I've seen, I seen that uh, there's like a poll on Facebook where people were like, they need to do one in feudal Japan of like the Predator going up against Samurais or right. something. That would be pretty cool. I'd watch that. I um, think the historical context, like helps because there's no like phone for help phone <laughs> right. for home whatever and you could you have different characters each time without worrying about continuity kind of yeah stuff, so. and you don't got to bring back all these old shit like i don't know i don't know i feel like this movie still might not have done well if it was in theaters just because no, there's no big not. names attached to it no and it's not and called that, predator that's another thing some of the stuff or some of the cgi was a little wonky in this um just i, I know i don't know what how much their budget was I think it was like 70 um, mil. Okay, so it's a relatively low budget for the type of movie that's being made. Yeah. Right. Um, especially for the franchise it's connected to. But that was really noticeable for me. Um, some of the acting felt very CW ish. Like, <laughs> she had a couple lines. I think for the most part, when she's like off in the woods by herself and we're just kind of doing the lone wolf thing, maybe yeah. because she's just talking less, but yeah. I, I kind of bought into her. And by I that didn't. Point. And people were saying how cute the dog was. I don't really think the dog did much. I mean, I like the dog. The dog was fine. It's a cute dog, but like, what was the purpose it didn't of like, the dog? It the didn't dog like didn't really help. Yeah, it didn't like hinge into my heart. No, the dog fucking bites the predator at the at some end. Point. But I'm like, you would think that the dog would do more since the dog is like her companion. I know? mean, the dog. I like the dog, but I think some people just attach to dog yeah. immediately. Yeah. Can't blame them. Dog and and woman. Yeah, woman's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else for It's an Art Bro? Um, I think we should probably talk a little bit more about the original Predator. Oh, that's true. OG Predator. We are in Guatemala. Yeah. Uh, they were actually filming somewhere in the jungle. Yeah. Getting real sweaty, dealing with real poisonous bugs and shit. Well, I think I'm sure that some ex-military guy or some people are actually in the military watch this movie and rolled their fucking eyes at some of the shit that they're doing in it but i thought the interesting parts were like when they're actually going covert and doing the sneaking around stuff and like <laughs> the action sequence in the beginning where they raid that camp it's, it's so just the most ridiculous shit it's the most over the top like 80s thing <laughs> shooting from the hip running in no it's all hip firing yeah nobody's aiming no and it's like some guys have two machine guns and just blast them off jesse ventura's got the minigun oh yeah he's going ham just ripping dudes apart and you know what i found some of the practical effects for that pretty pretty cool and pretty interesting a lot of like dudes were actually getting exploded or like <laughs> arnold like disconnects her generator which is like on a truck and just like rolls it into camp with a bomb oh my god there's that, lots of fun explosions that made me want to watch rambo i gotta watch that sometime yeah it's a it's a it's got a lot of fun like 80s action in the beginning and then it kind of slows down it into this yeah. oh my god bring it over man my guy Ooh, brewski's on delivery bless you know Thanks. shout out to our waiter thank you dakota lubrication on demand we love it where did these come special from? guests dakota i Godfrey. went to the liquor store while i was changing my laundry oh I shit even know you left oh shit he's trying to be about as quiet as i could <laughs> the greatness that's occurring over here i see him like creeping to the door and then he, <laughs> hey, heard, he holds out the, these i heard bottles. the two creeks and then i was like <laughs> i was gonna ask you guys what kind of beer you wanted then i was like hey Free beers, free beer. It's, it's pretty true. good. Phenomenal. Yeah. Bless you. Mm, Our first boy. sponsor, Dakota Godfrey. I'm glad I could be here. <laughs> I'll only be here, uh, you know, four to six. He's already drunk. <laughs>
negative. <laughs> nah. I'll come back in about 30 when I am. Um, that was much needed. That was, actually. Uh, 80s shit. It's just a very 80s movie. I was it's, waiting on Arnold to say, put that cookie down. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Jiggle all the way, man. I wonder if I... Uh, you know that movie's set here, right? I ain't got no time to bleed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a classic, classic line right there. Anna, get to the chopper. You'd have to look at some lists, because I think that that line would be in, like, the top ten most iconic lines in cinema. Probably. It's funny, because you don't Maybe ever I'm... know the original context. People just saying no, it out don't. of context. They just know that's what Arnold Schwarzenegger says. He says, get to the chopper. Yeah. Just like how in Terminator, when he's like... Uh, Come up with me if you want what to live or uh, what does he say? Give hasta, me your clothes. Give me your clothes. What is it? Hasta bike. la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. Man, Arnold. Arnold is a national treasure. Truly. Mountain of a man. Watching this movie, talking about art. Dude, this man's fucking, body. He's fucking ripped. He looks like a Greek god or something. Holy dude, shit. Dude, like the dudes with him are all big. Like when you look at them by yeah. themselves, they're all big. And then Arnold shows up and it's like this this man's a tank dude i mean ask any bodybuilder ever they'll probably say arnold schwarzenegger is like their their biggest um, like you saw carl, inspiration carl ever. weathers bicep next to his but when he stands well, next carl, to carl weathers yeah that was apollo I mean, creed carl, carl weathers fucking fought rocky fuck, yeah. <laughs> fucking fought sylvester stallone the most macho guy ever yeah i think that's the biggest piece you know, of art. i feel like we should watch expendables <laughs> we should definitely watch Expendables. jason statham <laughs> with all of the and Bruce Willis before R.I.P.'s brain. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Bruce Willis, he had a run. Not saying he's dead. Oh, the director of this, uh, I believe his name is John McTiernan. Dude. Also the director of Die, Die Hard. Hard. Yeah. <clears throat> Dude, listen. Wait. We should do. We got to do a Die Hard one, too. Oh, Die Hard 4. Sure. Look at this. Listen to this list of movies. Hold on. Let me click them. Like, look at this run. And we might, all these movies might end up on this podcast at some point. Maybe not all of these, but all right. So starting with Predator, he had a, another movie before that that I never heard of, but Predator, Die Hard, The Hunt for Red October, The Last Action Hero, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Like, what a run. Yeah. Even though. What a guy. There wasn't many, there were only two good Die Hard films. <laughs> Die Hard and Die Hard with a Vengeance? Or is it a different one? It's Die yeah. Hard and... Yeah, that's Die Hard 2. That's Die Hard with a Vengeance? Yeah, the one with Samuel Jackson. What? You don't remember Is that this? the one in the airport? I think so. No. Die Hard 2 is just Die Hard 2. I don't think it has a tag. Uh, targeted but where the plans to rob the Federal Reserve Building. Yeah, no, not Die Hard 2. Yeah. Well, anyways, I also like The Hunt for Red October. It has <laughs> Sean Connery. You know what's a good, like, modern action film? What is the one uh, Olympus Has Fallen? With the, uh... Oh, yeah. The, like, Save the President one? Yeah, that was one Gerard of the last Butler true... And, like uh, Jamie Foxx? Yeah. Yes. That was no, the not good Jamie one. Foxx. Wasn't it? It was, There uh, was two movies that were the exact same idea that were released the same summer. It was, uh, Morgan Freeman. It was it Morgan and Freeman? Jamie Foxx and the other guy. And they Channing were Tatum were in the other one, right? They were in another movie called uh, Law Abiding Citizen. That's a different film. No, there was two movies about raiding the White House that opened like at the damn near the same time. 21 Drum Shoot? Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, that was like the last true like Macho Man action film. So anyways, uh, yeah, just, just if you were in the mood for some just like kind of ripping 80s nostalgia i think uh predator i mean there's lots of good choices for that but predator is a decent choice i yeah. know you hate predator but that's like its strength its strength is it's like 80s charm at this point yeah yeah it's not that i hate the predator let's get that let's get that clear i don't okay, hate the predator it's just not you just came in you sat down and we're like i'm gonna shit on the predator franchise it's just not my jive man i don't okay. know I don't want to put you in a box. Don't let me speak for you. I'm already in a box. Set yourself. I'm about to go sleep in my box after this. Oh, like a like a grave? Like a... <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant like my home. Oh, I thought you meant like a... Not a grave, but what you get buried in? <laughs> a casket? Yeah, that one. No, I'm not going to die, but... Cool. I like that I was better. saying I'm homeless, and I need help. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got some beer. <laughs> that makes it all better. All right. So let's go on to Let the Hate Flow Through You. Good. You 
Use your aggressive feelings, boy. Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> Let the hate flow through you is where we air out our annoyances and our complaints. And we've kind of done this a bit throughout the mo- throughout the podcast. Yeah. But what are our annoyances and complaints about Predator? Um, Mine's sort of a retrospective. We kind of talked about it already, but just the, the action towards the end. Yeah. It gets a little, like, stilted. They're, like, straining with the effects. They're like, yeah. we got to make the Predator invisible. How do we do that? Ooh, this is going to be tough. And it's impressive for the time. Yeah. Um, but it, I did the same thing where I watched Prey first, and then I watched Predator, and it was like, oh... It's a tough comparison. Um, I just... The campiness is a little much for me. Um, I understand that's the time period. And I, I can also easily see the Predator, like why the Predator is many people's favorite movie. Sure. It's got some funny lines. Yeah. It's got some funny characters. It's got some like little... Me- There's so many memorable lines. Like, uh, it ain't no man in these sports tracking us i don't remember what he said exactly but it's like yeah it's not a man back yeah. there and he's just like staring out into the distance and i could see how people would find this super exciting when it first it's like a, out, it's so. like a watch along it's like the movie that you say all the lines along to sure. while you say it and you like punch the air <laughs> when the thing it happens so many times that you're able to, to yeah i mean i they so watch this, this. kind of the problem that i had with like the problem that we both had with um with shawshank redemption yeah and just thinking about the time period in which this came out and the movies that it went up against during that time, and I just think of like Terminator. I think of Alien, Aliens. Um, I'm thinking of like, I mean, even Die Hard too, or just like other films that came out around these times are just so much better. Um, that's why this film doesn't really do it for me. This is like, if I want to watch a cool sci-fi movie, like, especially in that time period, I'll watch Alien or Aliens, or I'll watch Terminator. Like, those are the defining films of that period for me, as far as in that genre. So, are you saying, like, I don't hate it, but, like, 7 out of 10, versus I'd watch the rest? Or were you like, I really didn't like watching this? It was like, it was a 7 out of 10, and I wasn't like, I didn't hate it, because there's stuff I liked, and I mean, it, it was funny, and it was... It's got that that campy charm to it, and I just, I was just so bored. <laughs> I can't really explain it. I was just so bored, and maybe because my mind is just at the point now where it's like I've just seen everything. Yeah, and I've seen all that films have in terms of like CGI and and, and action and stuff. I'm a film like, god. <laughs> <laughs> it took a long time, but I got here. <laughs> I'm better than all of you. No, but uh, yeah. Uh, you, you you get what I'm saying though. It's not that I'm trying you. to be cynical or that I'm hating on a film. I just I couldn't I just couldn't click with it. Yeah, I didn't click with it as much as I wanted to. I expected to walk walk out of this and be like, oh, that's probably a perfect movie. I don't think I I don't think I came out thinking that. Yeah, and I didn't yeah. expect to come out thinking I like Prey better than I like The Predator. Prey. So um, I don't know. Yeah, and Prey. And I like Prey more than I liked Predator. Hate flow through you for Prey? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Prey, the thing I was bothered by the most was the the dialogue. And uh, I'd just say th- the low-budgety feel it had to it. I don't know if it felt low-budget, but maybe that's just because I was watching on a 32-inch screen from a little too far yeah. away. But I think the the main thing was... Yeah, I think the first half can drag a little, especially some of the dialogue is a little like, oh my god, okay, we get yeah. it. Like, yeah. we don't want a lady to succeed, we get it. Or like, you know, you I know, just think she's stuck just, in a box. There's so many, so, so many better sci-fi films now. Like, yeah, like Dune or or fucking. But this the, isn't like I wouldn't compare that to that. No, because those are like epics. Like they're, this they're is huge like a, grand scope. If you're talking like sci-fi horror, I don't know if there's a lot of like way better. Like maybe like yeah, Alien, Aliens, or like uh, um, Annihilation. I mean, uh, Annihilation's good, but it's a, it's a different movie. I know Annihilation I doesn't that, have like fun. But I, I just I'm not in the mood for these films. Yeah, you know, I'm just not in the mood for mindless action anymore. And maybe that's because I'm just getting older where I can't take it anymore. But I don't know. I don't want to sound like annoying. When I'm saying this, but it's just, 
Because these are basically the same movies. Yeah. And I think that's what I get tired of, too, is, like, these franchises pumping out the same shit. They do this shit with Star Wars. They do it with Marvel. They do it with everything. And so I just, I, I get fatigued by it because it's like, okay, this is just the same movie as Predators, but it's in the 1700s. Well, I think it was I mean? easy for us to think that way. It's a soft Cause, reboot. Because we watched them, yeah, because we watched them back to back, but... In the in the grand scope of the Predator series, they really never went back to their roots, so to speak. It was like Predator right. in L.A., and then it was like a bunch of people get dropped into the Predator zone, which is probably the closest to back to the roots. And then I don't know what the fuck happened in the Shane Black one, Predators, or no, the Predator. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever watch. That. I don't think I'll ever see it. Keegan Michael Key's in it. Uh, uh, all I know is the Predator wants the power of autism. That's like literally what I know. Is somehow that, that's an actual thing like somehow like the uh, autistic boy has special things that it needs not even fucking with you that's really interesting. sounds terrible <clears throat> yeah it's probably <laughs> fucking, it's it's interesting in a terrible way but, yeah. but think- all right so now we come down to our final segment where we answer the question is this the perfect movie he lost a baby brother <sighs> perfect in every way <sighs> I had a baby brother! I had a little baby brother! And he was perfect! Perfect in every way! First up, Predator. No. 1987. No. I would say no. I liked it, actually, but... Mm, there's better, like you were saying. I think there's better examples in a similar, similar genre, similar feel from okay, the time so- era. Think of this versus The Thing. Yeah. The Thing shits all over it. It's true. And that's like the tame, the same type. It's not the, the same, whereas like a slasher, but it's the same essential Thing is an plot. older movie. Yeah. Um, and it's made by a master of horror, John Carpenter. I heard that somebody <laughs> told me on Twitter that only Jordan Peele's made three good horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> I think we mentioned that in our yeah. note, in our note review. Um, so is Prey a perfect movie? No, I'm like closer to saying yes, but I don't think I would win that fight. No, Do you, you're you're a hard no. I just what I will say is I really appreciate. Like, the simplicity of it all. And I agree with you on that aspect, yes. It's like, while it's tough to lift it up to the perfect movie tier, it sets its sights where it sets its sights, and I feel like it mostly nails what it's accomplishing. There's some slight missteps along the way, but it's like, we came here to sort of get back to the roots of the Predator, and we are, you know, setting it in a new setting, and but we're gonna, you know, play on the things you already know, and it, and it, I think it does that effectively. It brings some new things. There's some moments that I think I remember that I find more memorable than from Predator. Like I think it's the, the most interesting concept out of the latter. Like Yeah. Everything following Predator, it's definitely the best sequel to Predator. Sure. That seems to be the, the consensus. Uh maybe after I watch all five someday. I feel like I need to watch Alien vs. Predator again. Alien vs. Predator is kind of a funny movie. Because I feel like I would enjoy that. It's the, the Predators befriend uh, our lady main hero. Black lady. Yeah, yeah the black lady. And, and they give her a spear. They do. <laughs> and they fight off Alien. They fight off the clean Alien together. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun in a bad way. Like, it's not actually the worst watch ever, but it's not a good movie. Certainly not I'll that. i have to watch it again. I heard the second one was like... You couldn't even see what was going on. It was so dark. It might have been one of those like made to be in 3D movies. Yeah. Who knows? I don't give. A f- I don't even care about this franchise. Fuck Predator. Yeah. Just kidding. Actually, but but <laughs> <laughs> but Prey. It's not going to be on the perfect movie list, but I'd recommend you watch it if you got Hulu. You yeah, got I mean, time. and that's the thing I do appreciate. I didn't have to go pay t- twenty fucking dollars to go see this movie. I just I had my Hulu subscription already. Watched it. Right. And I, uh, I was in the comfort of my own home. And, and this is how movies should be. I hope Hollywood takes notes and does like the trim down sequel where it doesn't have to do everything. Like if this was Disney making the sequel, it would have been like every single line I read from Predator would be in Prey. They only do one line. 
they do the if it bleeds we can kill it yeah, yeah. everything else yeah. they basically like the she gets coated in mud and then they subvert your expectations yeah. she washes herself off they would have time traveled fucking uh the native chick to to with, meet Arnold. To meet Arnold. And it been like... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Fucking Avengers music. And I, I, I think, like, you know, you make these sequels. You don't have to put all the things people already know. Right, you right. just need to recreate... Just make a coherent and interesting story. And, re- and create that feel in a, in a different context. That's what right. they did, and it's great. And actually, I was listening to a podcast review of this, and they said, this guy should go make a Star Wars movie, which I don't know if anyone should make a Star Wars movie. I love Star Wars, but let it die. And so... But the but I think the, the concept of like, oh, I get that you can just make a movie in the universe and, you know, change some things here and there, and like... Make different stories each time. It, yeah. it doesn't have to be... Each story doesn't have to connect to each other, and Everything, even that that little gun thing at the end, I was like, "Why do you even have to do that?" Yeah, it's kind of unnecessary. Have to do it. It's like a nod to people, so people are like, "Oh my god!" Pre- I from- watched Predator two. Oh my god! Like- I watched this YouTube lore video about Predator. It's like, bro, and, and and here's the thing: this is what pissed me off the most is because I went on Facebook and I seen somebody say, "Oh my god, the prey is a masterpiece of of." sci-fi and like just like bro like they made one predator film that did okay and it doesn't make it a masterpiece it just means keep it up you know, <laughs> you know nobody I mean? can keep like, up the good work like, nobody can like anything on the internet besides us apparently just like it's somewhere in the middle. It's either dog shit or the best thing or it's ever. It's a fucking masterpiece. If if anybody watches this movie and says it's a masterpiece, you can get smacked in the fucking mouth. Like that, I mean, that mas- shit is come on, bro. Masterpiece is a tough word. I would say damn near. I think there's a damn near perfect. Very small minority that's a masterpiece. Is this. <laughs> what up? <laughs> All right, that's the end of the podcast, everyone. You gotta keep this. <laughs> <laughs> He's outside, wait! The homie's over. Hey. Alright, we'll see y'all next episode. <laughs> <laughs>